Greetings, Algebraites. As you look at your assignment and your notes here on 2-3, notice that our goal is to find the line of regression using technology and determine correlation. So a second video is going to talk through this part. So this video is going to cover the line of correlation, excuse me, the line of regression using t -t -t technology. So what we need to do is take all this data and we need to enter it into our handy dandy Texas Instrument Graphing Calculator. So let me do a quick overview. Number one, we're going to enter that data into the Stat Edit. So you're going to enter it into a, um, tables like this. Next, we're going to view that scatter plot just to make sure that things actually fit well. And we're also going to make the trend line and view that. And then we're going to look at something called the correlation coefficient. So this video does walk through another example, but I'm going to walk through specifically these numbers here. So have out your handy dandy calculator here. And let's go ahead and uh, pull up our data. And let's go into, let's look at some basics about this calculator. Remember that this y equals is where we can write our equations and then you can graph those equations and you can see those lines or curves or whatever. In this case the the curve is off the screen or out of the window. This button right here is called the stat button and that's where all my statistics are going to be entered here. So let's go ahead and tap on that and we're gonna edit. So a quick way to edit is that you can just hit the one or hit enter, it doesn't matter. But I'm gonna hit the one. Now notice that my table is already full of data. Yours might also be. So if that's the case, I'm going to clear it out real quickly. So above the plus right here, you see the word mem. That means memory. So go to second and hit that memory. And we're going to look at number four, see clear all lists. So if you just hit the number four, notice that it goes back to the home screen here. And it says clear all lists. And then I'm going to hit enter to execute. Now when I go back into stat, edit, so just hit enter, notice that my data is now cleared out. And I'm going to scroll over so that I'm in, at L1. And L1 means list 1, so it's the first column in this spreadsheet essentially. Okay, so I'm going to start entering the data here. All this data right here is going to go into this column. So scroll down here and just start typing 0 0.18, 0 0.17, 0.25, etc. And 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.21, 0 0.17, 0 0 0.35, 0 0.33, 0 0.26, 0 0.16, 0.12, 0.18, 0.15, 0.16, 0.16, 0 0.16, and 0.23. In a moment, I'll check to make sure my data is correct, but I'm just going to go over into L2 now and I'm going to enter the data for the price of these uh, diamond rings. So 702, 517.5, 963, 1290,1080, 484.5, 747,1017, 724.5, 529.5, 5, 16, 29.0, don't need that point 0, 14, 17 point 5, 9, 5, I need to fast forward this, 5, 13, 3, 3, 4 point 5, 6, 6, 4 point 5, 4, 3, 0 point 5, 5, 0, 7, 4, 9, 8, and 829.5. Okay, 400 years later. Now, notice here, I already have a problem. Notice I have less data over here than I do over here. So something I know is wrong. Maybe I double entered something here or misentered here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back through and just double check things. So the 829 is supposed to correspond with the 0.23. So clearly something's off there. So let's go up to the top. I'm just going to scroll down until I'm at the top here. And so now I can just check the data. So here that works. 517.25. So double checking my data here. Again, uh, it's a wise thing for you to do. Oh, so notice here. I see right here. The point, uh, 0.15 is 485. But the, oh, sorry, that wasn't a mistake. 
All right, so 2, 5, 10, 17, 2, 1, 4, 24, 17, 5, 35, 20, 33, 14. All right, so far so good. 16, so it looks like here's a mistake. I double entered the 994 right there. So there's not really a fast way to fix this. I'm just going to re-enter the data starting here at the 513. So 513 in here, 513, hit enter, and now 334.5, 664.5, 430.5, 507, 829.5, and then I just need to delete this one on the bottom there. So there's nothing left. Oh, let me go to, I think the delete button there will do it there. Uh, and just double checking here. This one clearly is 498. So again, I noticed another mistake. That's good. It's good that I'm making these mistakes so that you can see that clearly mistakes are easy to be made. All right. So let's see what our step one was. That was step one. And it said, let's go ahead and enter that data into the calculator. Okay, so we did that. Now I'm going to view the scatter plot here. So how do I view the scatter plot? Well, if I go ahead and go to graph, I don't see anything at all. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, see the above the y equals, there's a stat plot. So press second in stat plot. And what we're going to do is make sure that our plots are turned on. So plot one is off, plot two is off, plot three. So uh, I'm going to make sure that one is highlighted. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to Make sure the cursor is over, the, the uh, flashing is on the on, and I'm going to turn it on. Now notice my list I want it to be. I want the L1 to be my X values, and I want the L2 to be my Y values. And here, if you want to get really crazy, you can customize each dot to be an, an open dot, a plus sign, or a point. I'm going to leave it as this so we clearly can see it. So when I hit graph, ah, I still don't see anything. So here's the magic. And that's explained right here. If you don't see, uh, if you don't see it, what you need to do is go ahead and select zoom and number nine. So see the zoom button above here. So I'm going to hit the zoom, and you can scroll down to nine if you'd like. But I'm going to scroll down just to show you, show you what it says. Zoom stat. But at any point in time, if you just press the number nine, it's going to automatically fit. Now what's this? line here. Oh, that's a line that I had previously in. So I'm going to go to Y1. I'm going to delete this one and clear the whole thing out, excuse me, and I'm going to graph. So here I see my data and we do see that there is a trend going up. So let's see what the next thing asks us to do. So now we're going to graph the trend line. So we have to find it and graph it. So uh, let's go back into stat, so, or excuse me, not second, just go into the stat button right here. And we're going to scroll over to the calc. So all you have to do is arrow right to the calc. There's a lot of options here, but the only thing we need right now is the number four, linear regression, linreg. Notice that later on in this chapter, we are going to do quadratic reg uh, regression and others. But right now, again, just press the number four, press the four, and it pulls this up. So let me explain what this means. This is going to take the data from L1 as my X value, L2 as my Y value, frequency list we can ignore for now, and where do I want to store this equation that it comes up with? And the answer is, I actually want to store it here in Y1. So how do I pull up the variable for Y1? So it's hidden here, so what we need to go is go into VARS. VARS means variable. Click on VARS. See the Y VARS on the top menu, so I'm going to scroll right. and Number one is a function, so it just hit enter. And then y1 is the y1. And there it is. So let me show you once again, real quick. I'm going to delete this one, and I'm going to, it's a very quick process. Go vars, hit right, and enter, enter. And so now it says take the data from L1 and L2, plot it, and then create a line that goes among it, not just a line, but the best line. And we're going to store that in the y1 up there. So all we have to do is uh, hit enter and then enter to calculate. Now, this is my line and it does say 5,501 uh, per carat for the diamond. And the negative, of course, means that if you had a zero carat ring, they would pay you $372 to take that away. Obviously, the model doesn't work in that regard. 
And then you have these two things down here, R2 or R squared and R. You might not have that on yours, so if you do not have this, you're going to have to turn that function on in one, uh, just one time, unless your calculator resets. So let me show you where that is. Above the zero is the word catalog. That's kind of like the index in a book. This just tells you everything that happens. Notice that above the x to the negative 1 is a green D on mine, so I'm going to press that because I'm going to go to D for diagnostic. And I'm just going to use the arrow key, and I'm going to keep scrolling down until I see the word diagnostic on. Okay, now just hit enter, boom, and then enter to execute, and now the diagnostic is turned on. So when we do the stat, calc, and number 4, and we go to calculate. I've already stored it, so I'm not going to do it again. And notice that now my R's are going to be there, or yours will be. Mine wasn't. Mine was before. Okay, so this is our trend line, and I'll show you where that lives. Here's my trend line. It's, it's there, but when I graph it, watch the magic. Because this line is turned on in Y1, I'm going to go up. Oh, look, cleanly goes through and among all my data. So even if I just look at it and confirm that it's there, we see that it does look pretty good. And the calculator did do all these amazing calculations and determined that this is the best fit. So we call that the trend line. So you're going to record that R value right here, which again, where was that? Let me go back in to stat calc number four and hit enter, enter, enter. And here's the R value, 0.9912. What this pretty much means is a good approximation is like, what's its percentage of being right? And so it's a 99% chance of being right. The model is 99% good. Now that's not a perfect analogy, the percentage, but that's sort of how you can think about it. All right, so, so how do I handle this? According to the linear regression, how much should a half carat diamond ring cost? So how do I do that? Well, now that I have my data here, I can just put a half carat in there. So let me exit out on my home screen, and I'm going to pull up the Y1 by going to VARS, Y VARS, and hit Y1. Now do parentheses, 0.5. End parentheses and hit enter. So we expect this to cost $2,378.09. Alternatively, we could have graphed this and see the trace button right here? Notice that I'm on the plot right now, so I'm going to use the arrow key to jump now to Y1. And now I can just use the arrow keys left and right until my X value is half a carat. Um, now, clearly, this is uh, it's not going to be an exact because the plot, excuse me, the, uh, the cursor here is not jumping um, the perfect amount every time. So uh, if I were to go on and keep going until 0.5, I would see uh, what that value is. And it does go off, so this one doesn't work. I would have to actually uh, change my window to make that work. But I do want to point out that it's going to cost that much money. However, because this is extrapolation, we can't necessarily say that that is going to be the best, uh, that's going to be true, $2,300. It might be more, it might be less. But once we go outside the data, uh, and again, outside what data? Outside the x values here. Notice that there is no, not even a 0.4 here. So anything outside the data, anything below a 0.12 um, is going to be extrapolation, which is just um, often going to be inaccurate. All right, I hope that helps. And go ahead and take these notes. Have a good day.